All right, if you have your Bibles this morning, uh, we've got a couple of verses I'll, I'll be showing, I'll be talking about. I want to talk about, uh, about of course, a Father's Day message. We're, we'll continue our series on, on uh, praying in the Spirit next week, but I want to talk a little bit about Father's Day. I want to talk about the blessing uh, of, of a father. Um, I want to talk about uh, the first place, well, I'll just share this, the first place that the word father was ever used in the Bible is Genesis, actually, Genesis 2.24. It says, therefore, a man shall leave his father and his mother and shall cleave to his wife, and they, they shall be one flesh. So, you know, Paul uses this, this passage in uh, 1 Timothy, I believe, or 2 Timothy, one or the other, uh, when he talks about marriage, and it says that a man will leave his father and mother and will cleave to his wife. And so there's a, there's a cleaving there, but I want you to see this. This is the first place the word father is mentioned. You know, if you look at the Old Testament, you don't see the word father regarding God, uh, I want to say hardly at all. I I don't know how many places are in there. Uh, The word father in the Hebrew, listen to this, this is very interesting. The word father in the Hebrew literally has the same understanding. The word for it is the same word that is the first letter in the Hebrew alphabet. So the word we use, father, in the original Hebrew, literally is the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet. If you look in your concordance, it is H1, <laughs> Hebrew 1, number 1. And this is what it means. Uh, it means a the father of an individual. It has the understanding of God being our father. Uh, it means the, the head or the founder of a household. So this, is, this is H1. This is the first letter in the Hebrew alphabet, which means father, that means the head or founder of a household, a group, a family, or a clan. The word father means ancestor. It means originator or the patron of a class, a group of people. Now, this is interesting because this is real important because when when God created mankind, he is our father. He is our originator. Is that correct? So in the Hebrew, if we're looking at this correctly, God created a class of individual. Now I want you to see this. God created, he cannot create something outside his class. Now, you and I can create a robot, okay? But it is not of us. It is not bone of our bone, flesh of our flesh does not have our DNA. It wasn't made after our image or after our likeness. Does that make sense? And so here, this Greek, this Hebrew word father has the understanding of an originator or a patron of a class. Listen, the word father means generator. Y'all know what a generator is? I got a generator at my house. Matter of fact, I got to replace the carburetor this week. Uh, so I'm going to be, I'm going to be prepared. You know, they're talking about rolling blackouts. I'm like, we ain't had no rolling blackouts yet. And so I'm like, well, I'm going to make sure that I got my, my generator ready. If, if something goes nuts, I'm going to make sure I got, and we got those little portable AC units. Uh, Mumu going to have some AC. I don't care if I don't need hot water right now, uh, but I need some AC. So just in case, you know what I'm saying? And so, uh, so generator, well, generator is where electricity comes from. You know, when we go to Key Calker, they, they are 21 miles off the coast of the of the the coast of Belize, and their power plant is a generator, giant generator, mounted on a 18-wheeler trailer, basically. And so that's where that's where they get their electricity. So it starts from there. Okay? So we started from God. Real simple, real simple. We started from God. But I want you to see this. You were created from God. So what class of being were you created from? The God class. Now, that is not sacrilegious. The devil would love for you and I to think that is sacrilegious to say that. But if you just study and know the Word of God, you'll find out, ooh, that, that's what the Bible is showing us. From, out of his likeness, in his image, that is God class. So we're talking about fathers, originator, uh, generator. Um, and so the term is a term of respect and honor of a ruler or a chief, all right? So when we say Father God, God the Father, okay, that, that shouldn't be just a title. Now, we've done that. You, you, get, you get used to saying things. 
you know, some of our, our, our prayers. We just kind of, oh, Father, you know. But we've got to remember he is originator. He is the head of our God class. So if he's the head of our God class of being that we are a part of, then if he knew how to create us, because he did create us, didn't he? Then he knows how to sustain us, to fix us. So who should we go to every time we need something? Well, when you were a little kid, who did you go to? Daddy, daddy. You know, my kids come to me all the time and ask, Daddy, I want this, and Daddy, I want that. I've watched Jocelyn, Daddy, you know, and Jocelyn knows how to work you, man. Let me just tell you, that's okay because Mackenzie knows how to work me. Max, he knows how to work Mama, but he thinks he can work me, but he can't. But anyway, so, so, so here's the deal, that compassion of a father, where did we learn that? Where do we as dads, where did we learn that compassion to our children? From Father God. So why do people think God's mad at them? Well, you messed up. God's mad at you. Oh, you know, God's mad at me, and I'm just, you know. No. Just like a dad, you know, I was telling the kids the other day, we were talking about discipline, and I was trying to get them to understand that when I discipline them, uh, it's not me mad at them as a person. It's, th- it's me mad at the action that took place. Or that's my frustration at the action that took place. Now, it's easier said than done, but I'm just saying, that's where I'm trying to get my, my thinking and myself to, is that aspect of that understanding. And so I want them to understand that when they do something, they get punished. For lack of a better term, don't take it personal. <laughs> you know, it's, yes, I know it's your rear end. Yes, I know it's your pain and your tears. Uh, but, but just understand that I love you. I had to deal with your actions or what just happened or the attitude or whatnot. Uh, and then, then we're good. We're good. We're good. And that's it. That's why it's important to deal with the action right away and be done with it. Don't drag it out. Don't drag it out. And so, you know, you know I, you, I, I, my mama, she, she just... She'd rail on us for the whole drive home. Like, oh, come on. Can we just be done with it? You know, pull over, beat me, and let's be done. And so that's the better thing. Pull over, administer the rod of correction to the seat of understanding. Be done. So now we can go on and be happy. You know, you know what I'm saying? There's a reason why God shows us how to correct children. And God's ways is still better than Freud's ways. Your kids have problems here. Pills, boom. There you go. That'll help them out right there. All right. Or let's let's have them sit down and let's talk about why, why did you slap your sister? You know? You know, it's one of the first things when you when you read some good Dobson stuff, one of the first things he tells you is don't ask the dumb question, why did you do that? Duh, you're not gonna get a real answer. Uh I don't know. They just I just did it. Anyway, so now let's look at the Greek. Because now when you look at the New Testament, you'll see some Greek, of course, New Testament's in the Greek. The word father, once more, some of the similar understandings, generator. A very first one. I like generators because it's very manly to have a generator. You know what I mean? All right. Uh, It means a male ancestor. I'll tell you this. If there is a misunderstanding between a birthing individual and a mother, then you're going to have a problem understanding there is a father. You know what I'm talking about? You know, the government wants us to say, don't say mother anymore. They want to say birthing person. Is that what it is, birthing person? Okay, listen, let's not, you know, I'll just stop right there. But do you wonder, okay, what, what's Mother's Day going to turn to? Birthing person's day? Okay, that's going to be weird. All right, so I guess Hallmark's going to have to make some new cards. Happy birthing person's day. All right, that's, yeah, I'm sure they're out there, you know what I'm saying? Okay. So, father, do do you see the long-term objective here of eliminating the word father and the why? Because if we we no longer recognize the father, our father, we're going to have a misunderstanding of things down on the earth as well. Okay, so the Greek word for father, generator, male ancestor, either the nearest ancestor or a remote ancestor. Now, listen to this, near or remote. Uh, Yesterday, I was at my mom's in her bedroom, and... Uh, I just happened to notice this time a picture of her dad. And my, my grandfather, he was, a, he was a cute little guy. He wore the little, little, uh, little hats, those uh, der- derbies, what do they, they call them ones? The, the British guys wear, you know, I forgot what they're called. Anyway, he wore one of those little British hats. He looked like, a, he looked like Smith Wigglesworth, but a brown Smith Wigglesworth. I mean, literally, little, little, he, he's real dapper. You know, we took him to, while we took him to Fiesta, Texas at 80-something years old, I don't know, but we did. 
And so before, I think he was 84 when he died, and, and he came and visited us in the States. And, and he looked, he walked like, he walked like uh, C-3PO, just kind of, just dapper. I mean, 80 years old, just as straight as a rod, and just kind of, you know, and, and when he talked, it was a thick British with Caribbean. And so I was showing the kids a picture of Grandpa, because Grandma was my, Grandpa and Grandma was my originator, Mom and Dad, my originator, but I showed him a further ancestor, or a further originator, and I said, hey, this is where Grandma, this is where, this is where she came from. This is your great-grandfather. And so, you know, they've never seen the, any, any greats on that side, so, there was, so it was interesting. So a, a male ancestor either near or remote. So they showed the remote one. A founder of a family, a tribe, or people. The originator or transmitter of anything. This is interesting. Now, I'm painting a picture. I hope, I hope you're seeing this picture I'm painting right now because it's, it's getting us the Bible understanding of a father. All right, because it says here, it's very interesting words here. It says, uh, it says the originator or transmitter of anything. You know, the Bible tells us in the Old Testament that the sins of the father will go on to the fourth, or the third and the fourth generations. And so in other words, we, the, some of the generational curses, I know people are saying that things are hereditary, but there's still no proof for law that stuff. Well, you know, alcoholism is hereditary. You show me a physical proof of that, and I might think about believing that. Well, you know, this, this, this runs in your family. Listen, it is, not, it is not hereditary. Some of these things people are saying hereditary. It's called a generational curse according to the Bible. And so, so we can break that. I had to break that over my life, over things in my life. And so there are transmitters. Um, listen to this. Listen to this. So I heard a story the other day about a, about a wealthy Jewish man. And... Uh, and he had a, he had a friend uh, that uh, he just got to know, and they started becoming good friends. And the friend asked the Jewish guy, he said, um, he said how, did you, how did you get so rich? And the Jewish man said to him, what are you, what are you talking about? He said, well, you're, you're very, very wealthy, and, and I, know, I, you know, I know how you came over from, uh, from overseas, and you came and established yourself in America. Man, how did you get, how did you get so rich? And the guy says, I, I, I don't understand your question. That, your question doesn't really make sense to me. And he had his little, little foreign accent, you know. And, and he says, well, you're rich, and you, you just came to America, and you just hit the ground running, and you became rich. He said, he told, I forgot what the guy's name was. He said, he said sir, he said, I, I, I guess I see what you're saying, but you have to understand, I'm Jewish. Now, let me, let me clarify that. God, the originator, the father of, of us all, a Jewish father gave a covenant of wealth to Father Abraham, had many sons, and then our father, Jacob, and then our father, Isaac. Are you, are you seeing that? Our remote ancestors, this Jewish man's remote ancestors, his bloodline, his lineage, he came from wealth because the Jewish people are supposed to be. In other words, all he said was, in one word or one phrase, when he said, I'm Jewish, he was saying, I have the blessing of Abraham on me. I'm supposed to be wealthy. So I don't know what, what you're talking about. It's not, I don't, I'm not trying to get wealthy. I am supposed to be because of who my father is. Well, Galatians tells us if we are born again, then we are under the same father, Father Abraham. So this Greek word father the word transmitter. You know what a transmitter is? Okay, so right now, this, this microphone, this little unit right here, is a transmitter. And what it's doing, it's transmitting my electronic voice over to one of those receivers. And the receiver is receiving whatever the transmitter is transmitting. Does that make sense? Okay. God the Father transmitted himself to the next person called Adam. Yes, Adam failed, but then God reestablished covenant with his covenant man, Abraham. And then it all began and continued from that point on. Are you seeing that? So what can we expect as a receiver what can we respect into, or expect into our lives? We can expect anything that our Father is transmitting by His truth. 
And so how does God transmit? By truth. He does all things by the Word of God, and His Word of God is true. Remember the Bible says, let God be true and every man a liar. And so He is transmitting all of Him, everything about Him. Why, why do you think God, the, the prayer model, everyone say model, the prayer model that God gave Jesus was thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth exactly like it is in heaven. Because all God could do is send what He is, duplicate, transmit what He is from there to here, then in us, through us, to other people. Does, does that mean, I mean, think about that. Transmitter. So that's the Greek. And so originator, transmitter of anything, okay? Then the word, the Greek word also continues on. It's the author of a family or society of persons uh, by the same spirit, that have the same spirit as himself. The author uh, of a family or society of persons that has the same spirit as themselves. It, it only makes sense. Now you can write, you can write this down. In Romans chapter 8, verse 11, the same Spirit that raised Christ Jesus from the dead makes alive your mortal body. The same Spirit. So that's a Greek understanding of the fact, or probably the truth, that God duplicated His Spirit in us. That's why we use the word om omnipresent omnipresent, God's everywhere at all times. He can live on the inside of you, live on the inside of me all at the same time because he duplicated, once more, he duplicated himself, but this time not in the flesh, but in the spirit, okay? Now, the Bible calls Jesus the second Adam. We know Adam was the first Adam. He was the earthly originator of a bloodline made from the DNA of God, the generator. He messed up. The Bible calls Jesus the second Adam. Why? Because Jesus is the originator of a new life, the originator of a new lineage, but this time it wasn't of the flesh, it was of the Spirit. Therefore, the same Spirit that raised Christ Jesus lives and dwells in us, which is the Spirit of the Father, which means you and I have God's exact DNA in us. In us. We, why would He do that? So that He can transmit who He is and what He is in and through us. You know, in, in the military, when they send in a special operations team, a small group, uh, maybe five or six guys, sometimes they'll send in some SEALs or Delta guys into a hostile region, I mean a handful of guys, well, they'll make sure that one of those guys is something called a, a, forward, uh, a forward, uh, uh, forward operator, forward air operator. In other words, what they do is, uh, is their job, they have some special equipment uh, with an antenna and all that kind of stuff, is uh, they are able to, where they are, they can contact headquarters, but they can contact uh, air assets, bombers and fighter planes, Anywhere in that area, whatever the range is of that of that uh, that, that system they have, and they call in airstrikes uh, when when whether they're in trouble or they're checking out an enemy territory and see oh there's enemies over there there okay I'm gonna call in an airstrike over the for a forward air operator okay and so that's what they do they transmit f uh, anything that that bomber has they're transmitting it over there. You see they don't have the bombs on them they don't have the weaponry on them. All they are is a transmitter uh, of what needs to be done. They transmit it to a receiver in the airplane, and then the air airplane establishes the will of that forward air operator down on the ground. You see, God has what we need. And when we transmit to the receiver, His receiving, then He releases what He has. And then he transmits from this receiver to us, the, from this, this transmitter, to his, his, our receiver. And then we hear what he wants us to do. Are, are you seeing how that works? And so it's just this loop. It is a loop of communication. It's a loop of authority, a loop of power. And it starts from our God, our Father, our transmitter to us. 
and then down through to the earth where we are today. Isn't this interesting that our Father God is more than we realize? He's not just sitting up there doing nothing, but His communication to us and His operating in our lives, we've got to recognize who and what we are. So You know, because people say, well, you know, we know we're all God's children. Well, number one, if you're not born again, you're not. But second of all, if you're born again, yet not operating inside the Father's system, then who are you? Who are you? You just, you got born and then you left. You just, you just wandering around doing, doing, doing our own thing. Man, I'm telling you what, God's plans are awesome. God's will is magnificent. It's supernatural. It's better than we can, any, than any of us can ask, think, or imagine, according to Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. It's magnificent. So why would we want to be born again, yet not get to know the Father? Get to know His will, how He functions, and how He operates. So this, uh, this Greek word, it, has, it means one who has infused His Spirit into others. Whoa! Infused. This is the Greek word. Now remember, Greek and, and Hebrew are a whole lot more descriptive than English. You know, English is the baby language of the planet, one of the last languages to ever be created. I know pig Latin is probably, you know, the last, but you know, all right, we'll just kind of leave it at that right there. So one who infuses his own spirit into others, who actuates and governs their mind, one who stands in the Father's place and looks after another in a parental way, a title or an honor. So in other words, when we are on the earth, we are standing here in the stead of our Father. And so to know the will of God is to do the will of God on the earth. If we know what God's will is for our lives, then we'll do the will of God in and through our lives. Everybody say the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord, the fear of the Lord is simply this. It's loving God to the point where we love what He loves and we despise what he despises. There are things he despises, but to love what God... And the, the more we love on him and develop that love relationship with him, the more you and I will begin to know what he loves. And then we'll love what he loves, and we'll know what he despises, and we will despise what he despises. You know, when it comes to right and wrong, I mean, the Bible has you know, plenty to offer on that, but then there are things that as we grow in God, and our love walk with Him increases, then we'll start recognizing, oh, man, I, I, you know, I used to could do this, and it's not a sin, but man, I really feel like God is you know, in, impressing on me not to do this anymore, not to say this anymore, or go to this place anymore. You, you know what I'm saying? And so the closer you walk with God, that's why you don't need to tell somebody your, your, your convictions, unless they're trying to push you to do something. Man, I, you know, I appreciate you inviting me. I just, I just don't feel great about going to places like that, and so, you know, just leave it alone, you know, and and, uh, you know, why don't you do this? And why don't you do that? Eh, you know, I just, I'd rather not. It's just, it, you know, maybe it's just me. But I don't walk around telling everybody my convictions because I don't want my convictions to become yours because they're mine. Does, does that make sense? Now, you know, there's some right and wrong. You know, the Bible has it. It's, it's clear. But then there are things as we begin to love what he loves and despise what he despises. You know, uh, here the Lord's been really, really, really... <laughs> Really, really, I hate to say this. I'll say it this way because it's the only way I can really describe it. Nitpicking with me. Now, what I mean by that is it's showing me little things in my life that have bigger results than I realize. I'm like, well, look, that, man, I never realized how big a deal this teeny weeny thing does. But little things affect your integrity. Little thing r r uh, affects uh, your, your honoring him. And so I'm like, well, God, I, I, if that's the case, then, then I'm going to back off of that. I'm going I'm to I'm change. And so little things that were not a big deal, and I, you know, and if, if I were to tell you, you'd be like, oh, that's not really a big deal, you know. But to him it is, and bless God, I've already seen increase in my life because I've just decided, you know what, I'm going to learn to love what he loves and despise what he despises. So back to this right here. A, a, a one who stands in a father's place, the place of a father, and looks after another, and in a parental way, a title and honor. Now listen to this, let's continue on. Uh, there's a word progenitor, and that, that has a, 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 just a Greek understanding of, of an originator. Someone who first thinks or does something. So the first thought, the first thought that Adam had uh, had to have come from God. 
Where, where does, did Adam get his original thoughts from God? How did Adam realize that he can start naming animals? Because God gave him dominion. God told him. You see, our problem right now is we get a lot of our thoughts from religion, and we don't get them from God. We don't get them from the, the truth or the revelation of the Word of God. And so that's why we say stuff like, well, God's in control. You didn't get that thought from God. Well, you know, if God wanted me healed, he would heal me. You didn't get that thought from God either. There's a lot of thoughts we're getting that are not from God. You see, as a, as a child, I want my kids to think my thoughts. Now, I think my thoughts are pretty good, so I guess I want them to, you know, now if I have some bad thoughts, I've got to make sure that I'm correcting my bad thoughts. Does that make sense? And I've said things in front of my kids I had to repent. Ooh, you know what? That was, that, Daddy shouldn't have said that. That was ugly. I shouldn't have said that. And I, I'm getting better at that because I don't want to duplicate my, my messed up part of myself to my kids. I want them to be better than me. I mean, that's my objective is that when, 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 when they get older, I can look down and say, wow, you know, at, at, you know, when I was your age, you're, you're way better than me right there. Pray, I mean, that, would be a, that would be the greatest honor of my life is, is for my kids are 49 years old to be 10 times better character-wise, integrity, and faith. That would be the greatest thing. And so back to this right here, someone who first thinks or does something. So, so my thoughts daily, my original thoughts daily should be God's thoughts. How could or would that happen? By starting the day with the Word of God. Real, real simple. All right, a person who begins something, some, uh, something that is a model or someone else, something that begins to develop a uh, development of somebody else. All right, listen to this. Re this is Revelation chapter 1, verse 8. I am, talking about God, I am the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Uh, Wherefore, seeing we are compassed with such a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does such easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Author and finisher. If we would begin to go with the elementary things of the Father, look back at our author. Look back at our originator, our generator, the ones whose thoughts we should have right now. The ones, you know, we, uh, every day when we're leaving the house, we, we have some confessions, some verses we speak out loud. Why are we doing that? Because I want these thoughts to be, become my kids' thoughts. I want them to have the thoughts of their father in their minds and I have to be proactive about it. I've got to be deliberate in getting that. We have, I made my own devotionals for the kids because I want their father's thought. And listen to this. I want them to recognize when my thoughts are not their father's thoughts so they won't get messed up by my thoughts and I mislead them in my thoughts. You know, right now in the body of Christ, in ministers, kids, I'm seeing more of them leave God and get away from God because the parents' thoughts were not God's thoughts and those parents' thoughts got transferred to those kids' thoughts and because the kids' thoughts were wrong and got messed up and hope was taken away, these kids' thoughts don't believe in God anymore. And now the new word for, uh, for, uh, for Christians is, uh, oh, what's that term I read, read last week? They're deconstructing Christianity. Why? Because they had the wrong thought in the first place that was given to them by someone that had the wrong thought. If we teach our kids our thought, pardon me, if we teach our kids God's thoughts, then they'll begin to recognize when daddy or mommy's thoughts are incorrect, and then I'm teaching them how to correct me properly. Y'all know that. It's okay for your kids. Well, dad, oh, it's so funny. I'm going to tell on Uncle Aaron. So we were, we were at Six Flags the other day, and, uh, and they've done a great job teaching their boys God's thoughts. And so I don't know if, if uh, Pastor Aaron had said something to their son, Blaze, regarding, y'all do this, we'll do this. Then Bla I heard, all I heard was Blaze saying, well, Dad, you said this, and, and that's an integrity thing. Because you know, I'm, like, I'm like, I don't want to walk away from that. But I thought, man, how many times have my kids said that? You said, Dad. And I thought, man, he taught his kids right. To, you know, you know, listen to dad, but if dad says something wrong, and I thought, man, how many times have I been in, in, in his shoes where I said, 
you know, I told my kids something, my kids had to come back and say, well, Dad, you said, okay. <laughs> I thought, man, that was one of those, oh, I'm so glad to hear that come from somebody else's kids because I hear that all the time. And I just kind of walk by, woo you know. What, what am I saying? I'm saying this. We've got a wonderful father. If you didn't have a good father growing up, listen, it's okay. We have a good father now. And we have to exchange. The Bible says that, that we are translated from the kingdom of darkness, which is the flesh, into the, into the kingdom of light, which is the new kingdom of our father. And so this morning, I'm going to ask you a real simple, real quick question, and that's, that, that's just this right here. Ready? Who's your daddy? Who's your daddy? You see, growing up, my dad was born again, but he didn't really live for God. And so I could say, my, my parents were divorced, and, you know, my dad, uh, we lived with my mom. I, I might live with my dad when I was older, but, uh, you know, he moved off to the Virgin Islands for a couple of years, and he was in Florida on a job site for a couple of years. And so I can, I can come back and give you all kind of reasons why I got daddy issues. But you know what? My daddy ain't got no issues because I changed daddies. No, I, I, I love my earthly father, and I honor my earthly father by all means. I went and honored him. I drove eight hours round trip to go want love on him. You know what I'm saying? But what I'm saying is this, is that my life now that I'm born again has nothing to do with my earthly father. It has only to do with the DNA of whose class I belong. If you are of Abraham's seed, you are a new creature. If you are in faith, if you are of God, born of God, you are a new creature, a new creation. We can love our earthly dads. We can see all the mistakes. My kids can look and see all the mistakes I made as an earthly dad, but I'm trying to point them to a better father than me. Amen? Let's stand up this morning. Isn't that interesting? We basically preach definitions today. But what it did was it opened our eyes to a better understanding, a deeper truth of who we really are. And listen, that will help our association and our connection and our communion with God. You see, the Bible says that God walked in the cool of the day in the garden with Adam and Eve. What was he doing? He was communicating his thoughts to Adam. Adam. I want you to name these animals. Adam, I want you to do this. I want you to do that. I want you to, Adam, listen, man, I, I gave you all this, and here's what you do. Adam, here's my thoughts on this. Adam, and what Adam had the choice to do was do the thoughts of God, which is the word of God, or do his own impulse or flesh. And we know what he did, but the second Adam came down so we can correct it and live by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of our brand new father. Amen.